I've been working in Africa for a while and then uh, I'm producing salmon in Norway. That's my main activity. I'm a publisher also in Switzerland. And I came to Champagne about four years ago uh, after my active career. And uh, as a hobby, I buy old farmhouses like this one and castles, which I refurbish in big volumes with the glass elevator and botanical gardens inside and uh, a lot of uh, recreational features. Many of his clients are rich and famous people looking for a quiet life in the country. They don't really insist on being where the action is, like you know, on the on the Riviera where you can see the lake and there are big casinos and restaurants. And they're spending half the money or one third of the money. They have more space here and they're nearer to their own human roots, I would say. This is one of the buildings Thomas bought for redevelopment in the village of Champagne, the 18th century Domaine de Montfleury. A former hostel for boarding school pupils, now divided into three luxury homes. The lion's share, 2,500 square meters, is going to his friendly Loa Willard, a member of the Hawaiian royal family and heir to its considerable fortune. Total renovation costs 30 million francs. It's a historical monument, very important for the people of the village because it's been empty for many, many, many years and uh, a lot of ev events were going on here. So everybody in the village is very happy that this is happening here. I expect, and this is, this is what I require of my architects and designers, when you walk through this, this will be a piece of art. It won't need any furniture. It will be an, a piece of art in itself. I took the habit <clears throat> when we do projects like that, big farmhouses, big castles which we refurbish, is to invite the village to have a glass of wine to look at the project, to involve them. Then we ask them, you know, what do you think about it? Do you have any ideas? We're interested about your ideas. And uh, most of them would speak up, you know, and say, oh, well, ask questions and make suggestions with the big advantage that when we do submit for building permission, nobody opposes because that they know about the project. It would not give us uh, comfort or satisfaction if it wasn't consistent with the village and the village needs and the history. And inside his house is going to be a, a sitting room with cars and uh, then he has another room which is 300 square meters, that's his library and I mean it's just crazy and yes it, it, there's this big park with a, a big natural swimming area with an island in the middle about 150 meters long and uh, probably a tennis court and three golf holes to the side, riding arena, so it's quite a project. Here's a conversion in the village of Pommy near Yverdon. This farmhouse was divided into four units. The end house is owned by journalist Sophie Stramberg, who paid 1.3 million francs. She considers it a bargain. I was a little surprised because the houses look so amazing for the price. Um, we came to visit some of the properties and we were just blown away about how free it was that each owner could really design the house themselves. Sophie's nine-year-old daughter Skyla refused to move from Geneva unless she could have a say in the house design. She wanted to slide from the second to first floors. So the space has been created and the slide is about to be delivered. Sophie also fulfilled a dream of her own. I love swimming um, and my dream, ultimate dream, would be to have an indoor pool. So, so that was something that really, yeah, that was a big, a big deal for me. Sophie's going to be neighbours with Mike Noonan, a postal consultant, and his wife Gina, a former stockbroker. They're paying 2.5 million francs for their house at the other end of the block. It looks fairly conventional from the outside, but the inside's far from it. A river runs around a large swimming pool dominating the ground floor. On one side of the pool's a wellness area, on the other a kitchen, and above these, three more floors. The buyers would prefer fewer stairs and bigger rooms, but are not sure how to achieve this. If you want cheap postage, 
talk to me. If you want to build a house, <laughs> speak to an architect. <laughs> Oh, I think, like I said, I think it's, I think it's close to being a, a real dream house, but we need to make this a little bit more um, functional, practical. So there are a few glitches to be ironed out. While Thomas Binchedler and the super rich get on with their business, the ordinary people get on with theirs, with just the occasional glance at the building work going on around them.